Buongiorno amici, ciao a tutti, sono BC, and welcome to another episode on the Diamond Society. I'm just hanging out in the uh, top of the clock tower in the conference room, and I uh, wanted to show you something, so if we look up, oh snap, there's a ceiling. That's right, man, there is a ceiling. Just one of the many things that I have finished around this area, because uh, do you remember a little while back when I talked about wanting to take on multiple projects and not just maybe one big thing? So, yeah, I kind of did that over the last couple of weeks. Uh, I've taken on a lot of small pro. You know what? That's not supposed to be a block. I must have borrowed that piston to uh, move the egg. Uh, but that's fine. We'll have to uh, come finish that as well. But uh, yeah, the the theme of this episode is going to be finishing things because I have finished a ton of things. And uh, I just realized that uh, perhaps kind of working on a lot of stuff at one time maybe wasn't the best idea. Uh, and so, <laughs> so I've just been kind of going around and finishing things. Now, let me show you some things that I've been working on lately. Um, most notably, and I, I think we've touched on this, but the roads, right? So been, I worked on all the roads, and I've been working to try and get them complete. Now, you can see this red stripe, and uh, it's actually orange stained clay uh, below um, red glass. And then there's uh, there's um, uh, redstone lamps every every so often. But I finished all these roads all the way from the center circle out to where the gates are going to be in all four directions. So that is very cool and very fine. Now, it's just a matter of getting the roads themselves completed as far as the detail work. But structurally, everything's done. I also incorporated these crosswalks. I don't know if we talked about that before, but I think we did when we touched on the streetlights. So that is all good and all fine. Now, uh... This area over here was completed by AFK Falcon, which is great. Awesome to get the help. But let me jut over woo, uh, over on this side. And you can see that this all used to be lake. It is now all filled in. And all that terrain over there is complete as well. Now, that all used to be a series of, like, depressions and lake and whatnot. Now, I went and I actually... Uh, soaked up all the water out of there because I needed all the sand. Kind of like this. You see how there's sand inside this lake? Well, I soaked up all the water, took out all the sand, filled it all back in with cobble, and uh, and then just kind of smoothed everything out. And I think overall this is going to be good to go. Now you can see, let's see, I think I got Optifine. Oh, snap. So over there in the corner, you could see a layout of some magna creams, magna cube thingies with uh, my initials in the ground. That is going to be the site of our next big skyscraper project is right there. Um, but some other things that I've worked on is uh, you could see this. Uh, there we go. Uh, around the perimeter of the wall, I've been building a road. And this road is, is nothing fancy. Right now it's just cobblestone. But it's uh, seven blocks out from the wall itself. And then I just kind of have been building a retaining wall uh, up against it so that it's kind of weird. Now, some places, uh, this wall is going to be, it's going to even out. Like, uh, let's see, whoop. like right there. You see how the wall is basically level with the ground? But other places, it's not, right? So that's what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to continue to work on this. But right now, man, I'm telling you what, this world is almost out of cobblestone, man. Holy crap. Like, I've been using so much just in the uh, in the work around uh, this this area. But now we still have our little cobble cube down here that, uh, that used to be the remnants of this mountain, so there's still a lot in there, but uh, we are quickly, quickly running out. So one of the things I'm going to finish is this road that goes all the way around the perimeter and the retaining wall, and, uh, and that's just going to be just kind of uh, something that helps us get around. I might put some sort of... Uh, like quick travel thing underneath it, but uh, I don't think so. I think it's just going to kind of, it's going to help bridge the gap between uh, the land of the uh, the walled city and where the actual base of the wall begins. Now, you could say, like, you could basically say that uh, I have kind of become the steward of the walled city, and, and that's cool, that's fine. Um, I'm okay with that. Oh, this is another thing I did. So this was a big lake, like, over here, 
Uh, I made it into a smaller lake, but then I built a river to connect these two together. And over here, I've actually been flattening out that mountain back there because I want to flatten this area out here for another skyscraper build. But these little mountains here, I want to leave right in the middle of, uh, of Spawn Town. Now, I've also been working off in the distance. You could see uh, I've been working on uh, where this road meets the uptown wall. But you can see now uh, there's an outline here of another skyscraper that's going to be going up. And that is Hodags. Uh, actually, him and I just laid that out a few minutes ago during his live stream, which is super cool, super fun. But uh, yeah, the biggest thing is is the the roads need to still get the sidewalks in um, and the lighting. Oh my gosh, the lighting. So in the process of laying out all this terrain, I took out all the lighting. Oh God, uh, basically because when Gizmo laid out all the snow, the only way to really clean it up was to. Um, oh gosh, that's my that's my hard bow. I don't want to use that one. Um, so we had to we used water buckets and it took out all the lighting. Now I told everybody to hold off because uh, I wanted to put in some formal lighting system, but uh, Amici, I just I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna spam torches, probably on a horse. It's the easiest thing and the easiest way to do it. Uh, so we're gonna get that all in place and uh, good to go. Um, but at some point, you know, and I figured I'd just leave the lighting up to whomever's building in the area. You know, once they're building something, maybe they'll uh, they'll decorate around the area and they'll kind of figure out how they want to light things up. So yeah, um, let's talk about. Ooh, let's okay, let's so let's continue on about other things I've been finishing up. Um, really, I've been working a lot in every dimension, kind of like uh, I was before. Um, and I think that's kind of like why I had mentioned that is because um, um, I just kind of been doing a lot of things here and there instead of one big thing. Now, oh, here's something that's different. So I did create a ladder up to the top, and you can see it's actually lit up up top there. If we get from a far, far distance, and uh, man, I keep remember, I keep forgetting I got this uh, Optifine zoom thing. Okay, you can see a piece of glass right there in the ice. It's kind of hard to see because it's similar in color. But uh, there's like a little observa ob observation tower platform thingy up there. So, uh, so yeah, people can go up there and kind of just look around downtown. Um, what else? All right, let's head into the nether, and I want to show you some other things that have been uh, going on. Hi, little buddy. Nice. <clears throat> All right, so as we arrive here, you can see I've went ahead and put uh, these uh, slabs all the way down as a cascading stairway, and this now is completely enclosed in glass, so we cannot, uh, nothing can get in, nothing can get out, but you can see the water is already all the way up to the end island here, and if I go ahead and take these carts, um, I'll travel all the way down, really easy, just step on the pressure plate, and... Um, uh, yeah, you'll see what I've worked out for a stair solution down here. But now, I went ahead and put water on the entire top of this tunnel just for continuity's sake to kind of keep one thing. But, uh, Amichi, I'm looking for a solution to not have water all over the place. And and I say that because I was watching one of uh, Dragon Tech's videos, and he was coming out here to kind of show it off. But it can't even be shown off anymore because it's covered in water. And... And I really didn't want it covered in water at all to begin with. Um, but unfortunately, the Endermen were teleporting to the fences and to the glass wall, the glass pane walls and all that other stuff. So it's just something that had to be done. And it's unfortunate because I really wanted to kind of show this thing off. But, you know, such is life, man. Sometimes you don't get to, like, see everything about everything. And really, we don't even need to see the uh, the the spawning platform up there it's pretty gross frankly it's gross it's ugly i don't like it at all and people say they like it but i don't i really don't like the design it was just something that addictive g and i did late at night and i was really really tired so um now i left these parts open from the water because uh you know if people wanted to jump off and fly back and and here's my big concern amichi i'm worried about this you know what i'm gonna stay back here <laughs> i'm worried about this water flowing and whether this is going to cause problems in the long run, does does the flowing water like animation cause issues for people out here like lag wise? I mean, there's not a lot out here because we're in the void, but 
still, if you look through the floor, you see this curtain of water, and I don't like it at all. So I've been working on a solution where um, basically I catch the water in like a cradle of glass, but then I, I rim that cradle of glass in uh, magna blocks. So if Endermans do TP out to that, uh, that rim of magna block, they'll instantly die. So that's all fine and good. Now, <clears throat> here in these uh, center sections, I've went ahead and put our stairs. And these are not TP proof because, uh, because of the, the gap between, like, say, right here and here. Enderman can TP here, but if they do, they're still a one-hit kill, and it's really nothing to worry about. So these stairs are the only places that Enderman can teleport to, um, but they really shouldn't be teleporting because they are a one-punch kill. And uh, the only time that any Enderman should get in here that may TP is if you hit him with a flame sword, but really that shouldn't happen at all. So... That is all cool and all fine. A lot of people get freaked out about the black glass. I guarantee it. I assure you that everything is completely sealed. You will not fall through. So please don't be afraid of the black glass. Um, just please, if you break it, please fix it immediately so somebody else doesn't lose all their gear in the process. So that would really stink and be, be terrible, man. So we're going to head back now to the uh, the main end island. And uh, there's one thing that I've been wanting to do out here for a long time, and that is, uh, it's kind of the basis of why we fought all the dragons in the first place. Uh, and that was to expose all the uh, the different, um, like, end-end portals. So, the, the whole concept that I had originally uh, was to build, like, kind of a ring around the, the end, uh, specifically with those portals uh, in play. And, um, and so that's one of the things that I want to get to real quick. Uh, but, uh, but that's something else that we're going to have to probably finish up at another time. Uh, and I say that just because there's a little bit of preparation work that needs to happen. Um, you know, people, people want to explore the end. They want to go to end cities. They want to get all the goods and all the things that are out there. But, um, unfortunately, uh, there's been people that have been coming out here with a very temporary mindset and uh, have just been, you know, building these pillars of just crap uh, that that just are unsightly and need to be cleaned up. And, you know, you know, it'd just be nice if somebody took the time to, to build like a staircase so everybody could benefit. But, you know, it's all good, whatever. Um, so anyway, eventually we got to build this ring and it, the ring is going to connect all these different portals together. Um, and we're going to have to build it out of end stone. We can't build it out of end brick, or I guess we could build it out of some obsidian too. Uh, but, um, but really that's the only material we're going to be able to use because otherwise the dragon's going to take it out. We might put some, some little accents here and there to kind of spice it up. But, uh, with the, you know, under the premise that we we're going to have to repair, uh, those, those things on a, on a, on a continuous basis, uh, because the uh, the dragon will tear stuff up uh, as she likes to clip through stuff. Now, you just saw that purple beam. Let's see if I can activate another one. Oh, gosh. Oh, my gosh. That freaked me out, man. I must have accidentally looked when I was looking around. Could you just go? Um, so, when you're close to a portal, it'll activate a beam that'll shoot through it. But I've also been going around and... I don't know if we'll be able to see it, but uh, I want to actually put beacon beams through everything. Now, you can see I've already been put into the uh, towers, and those towers correspond directly with those portals. And uh, really, I'm just going to have to go through and fight a ton of wither skeletons and get the heads and fight the withers accordingly. Uh, but I want to have beacons going through every single one of these portals. That way, this is more of like an arena. That, uh, that you're inside that will give you um, some effects to be able to fight the dragon and whatever else you fight here. Um, a little more efficiently, a little more cleanly, and um, and what have you. And um, the one, one other thing that I really want to do as well is I eventually want to get to kind of like how we had it in Season 1 with all the jack-o'-lanterns uh, laid out in a grid so that we can't get any Endermen spawning in here. And by doing that, it was just an easy, like, 
designation. Like there's a, you know, there's a hole right here. If the dragon clips through, it takes out the pumpkin, but you know, okay, let me just walk through and I'll just place new jack-o'-lanterns in every hole that exists. Um, and so I think I want to do that as well, probably once we get everything, uh, get everything done. So, um, I'll tell you what, um, no, man, it's going to, gosh, I, I'm, I feel pretty confident and I feel pretty proficient at making circles, but it would take me a little while to kind of like muddle through the exact circle that needs to be made to connect all these. So we're not going to do it right now. And I still, I'm, I'm completely out of end stone. Like building this tunnel project really took up a lot of resources. So that, that's something we're definitely gonna have to hold off to. So I'll tell you what, we'll save that for the next time that we are together. Ah, and I end up in my hobo hole. So it, <laughs> I decided to uh, kind of clean up all my stuff around spawn and uh, build like a little hobo hole. And this is, yeah, this is underneath the bridge in Diamond City. So that's kind of like where my temporary little home is. Oh, and check this out. Something that we have decided to bring back from season one is I have opened up my bonsai shop. So we now have bonsais and uh, it's been set up here for a few days. Uh, we offer every kind of bonsai so people can come and take them. And all we're doing is ask a donation. So, oh, snap. And we already got some donations. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very, very much. That's awesome. I'm glad. I'm glad we're getting donations. So another thing that uh, I've been working on recently, and it's something that I, I – this is kind of like one step in a four-step process. But I built a pumpkin farm inside uh, the mine area here. And it's actually right up this way. And you can see it goes up a long ways. I think it's uh, probably 65, 70 blocks of pumpkin farm. Same design uh, that Motbot used in Season 1 downtown in his skyscraper. Uh, and then this is on a timer using the growth of a pumpkin as the trigger. Um, I don't really like it's. I don't know. It, it seems to build up pumpkins uh, more often than the thing actually grows. But then this whole floor here is uh, hoppers. I used to just have it one hopper that would catch everything coming out here. But sometimes things get caught on the edge. So I just made it all hoppers. But uh, anyway, that all collects and goes down into this little zone right here. So there's a little collection point And uh, I had both of these chests full at one time. And then I traded a bunch out with... Uh, uh, what, what was his name? Derp, Derp Schnozzle? <laughs> or uh, Droop Schnizzle. That's what it is. Droop, Droop Schnozzle. Uh, so traded a bunch of uh, pumpkins with him. But basically, I've been trying to take advantage of AFKing. Like, I don't normally do that. And um, so on the days when I'm at work, because I work every day, basically, um, except for the weekends, I basically just come in here. I get my dogs all stood up like this. And uh, they would just sit here and bite the ankles of the skeletons. I sit myself here and just leave it. And when I come back at the end of the day, I've got probably over 100 levels. So it's been working out really, really beneficial. And normally about five stacks of pumpkins. So great way to just let the game kind of uh, help me uh, move along while uh, I'm at work and can't play. So you remember back when I showed you the uh, auction house? Well, we actually came and put a couple items inside of it. We had Addy's head and we had Hodag's head. And that's from a little, a little episode where we just uh, continually, or I just continually murdered him over and over and over because they asked me to. And uh, I figured, you know what? Somebody probably would want these to trade for, uh, for mending books. So let's see what we got. All right, we got an offer of one diamond block from Gizmo. We are going to definitely take that one. So Gizmo, sir, that's for you. What do we got for this one? A brown stick. A sign. A diamond block from Gizmo. Okay, we're going to also honor Gizmo's, uh, whatchamacallit, bid on that one. So we take those things out. We take those bids. We go over to Gizmo. And I'm going to say... Diamond block for you, diamond block for you, and we'll put those little pieces of paper in there so he knows that that's what it was for. And uh, yeah, pretty sweet, uh, pretty sweet concept, um, Cortezarino. Good job, man. 
this is a this is a cool way to kind of just uh, get rid of some things that may not have uh, so much value to you, but definitely might have uh, value to other people. GGS. You know, I've just I don't know. I've been in a weird mood just to like do the grind. And uh, so it's been really cool just to put some music on. In fact, uh, I've been spending a lot more time outside of my studio with my with my gaming PC and more time like down hanging in the living room uh, on my laptop. So that way I could kind of sit and visit the family and I could just do because it's easy just to place dirt, right? It doesn't take any time whatsoever. But just smoothing this area out and getting this to a somewhat respectable design, uh, again, it's dirt through and through. Like it is not a hollow underneath. And uh, check this out. This is this is the craziness. Can I? Why is it I can never think of the right button when I'm? Gosh, uh, statistics, blocks, blocks of dirt. Eighty thousand one hundred ninety-three blocks of dirt used. So that's how many times I've placed a block of dirt. Does grass is grass its own thing? I'm not sure. But uh, that is a ridiculous, <laughs> ridiculous amount. Of, maybe that counts for grass, too. I don't see leaves. Yeah, I don't see grass as a separate thing. So uh, so that's, that's crazy, man. 80,000 blocks of dirt and grass that I've placed to try and smooth this area out. And, and I really do like the result. I think it's come along really well. And I like this retaining wall, too. And let me, let me show you that real quick. Um, so if any of you guys are watching and you want to repeat this, it's really, 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 really simple. Um, using smooth stone, I'm using magna blocks, uh, red glass. Is that red glass? Yeah, it's red glass. Uh, some slabs. Let's see. Go up to the top here. So you can see it's seven blocks out, and then there's this this half slab block down. So too easy, and I think it's just kind of creates that extra little interest piece along the base of the wall. It's not too flamboyant it doesn't uh it doesn't fall away from uh from Traven's design at all and man he is just really like this wall looks really cool it's really coming along really well i like it a lot in our texture pack uh simply because there is like that variation in the stone you could see like all the little different uh variations where there's some that are withered away and some that aren't and some that are like even more dilapidated so I'm really enjoying the way it looks a lot. And even the stone, there's some that's more cobbly. So, yeah, it's looking really, really good. But, uh, yeah, the sun is setting. That means it's going to set for our time together as well. Uh, again, just been finishing up. I mean, that that really is the theme of uh, everything that's been going on in all things BC. And um, But uh, I'm ready to start some new projects, man. Uh, the clock tower is officially done, man. With the roof put on, it is officially done. And after this video is complete, in fact, probably before this video goes live, I will have put that on Planet Minecraft, and there will be a link in the description to go and download that. Do I have diamond? Nope, no dynamic lighting. So I will put a link. Uh, I will put a link, and I'll put that up for download, so you can go and get the uh, the Big Ben and bring it into your own world and, and check it out and explore it and all that other good happy stuff so um let's see so we got back in the back i'm not going to talk too much about uh what that's going to be however i will tell you that it is a building another building in london that i saw while i was on vacation and i'm excited to build in real life and uh we're going to start also working on our mansion so uh, I got a comment once upon a time that talked about uh, how they thought it'd be cool to build uh, something similar to the Plutonium Country Club in Lynx, and um, I agree with that. And I've got a mansion uh, design in my big folder of Minecraft ideas. I've got something that's been there for a long, long, long time, and uh, I think it's finally time to build that. It's going to be really sweet. Uh, kind of a little haunted house, kind of a little mansion, something that actually exists in real life, and we're going to build it in Minecraft, and it's going to be awesome. So, uh, that zombie can... F oh, he's found me from way back there. Holy cow. Uh, yep. Okay. Uh, I'm getting cornered. So, I'm going to see you later. Ciao a tutti, and aloha. Bye-bye. <laughs>